everyone. In this variation, we are working with a comparatively high speed of bow. So a good way to prepare this is to practice scales with a high speed of bow because that brings with it all of its own problems. So I would advise to practice simple scales with a high speed of bow. <laughs> for this variation. Now when you're working with a high speed of bow the most important thing is to have good contact to the string. One way of doing that is by actually feeling the string in your right hand. You can feel the vibrations of the string over the bow stick in your right hand, mainly in your first finger but you can in a way you can feel it in your whole hand. Start with an open string to get a feeling for that. If you feel the string in your right hand, then you have good contact with the bow. That works generally, and it also means that you have a good sound, that you have a, a sound where the bow is in the string. So feeling the string is a very good measurement for whether your bow has correct contact with the string. So that's the one thing. The other thing is that, of course, the weight distribution changes in the upper half. You need more weight in the upper half than you need in the lower half because the frog is heavier than the tip and you have to do that quite rapidly at this speed. So you have less weight, more weight, more weight, less weight. And it's a good idea to practice that. You lean forward as from the middle, you lean your hand forward and add a little bit of weight. There you go. So practice that way, you are very consciously adding weight in the upper half and taking it away again when you go back into the lower half of the bow. Of course it's important to pull a straight bow, it's a good idea to actually watch yourself. You can see if your bow is straight by looking at the hairs, so make sure you have a straight bow. Those are basically the things you can do to prepare yourself for this variation. Now, when you start practicing this variation, the first thing I would recommend is, of course, to practice it slowly and to practice all string crossings and double stops. That would be something like this. multiple advantages that's why it's a very effective way of practicing because you're practicing lots of things at the same time first of all practicing the string crossings and double stops will secure the position of your left hand the next thing it does of course is that it secures the intonation and the third thing it does which is not as obvious is it makes your bow more precise because you have a lot of string crossings in this variation and it's very important because it's a variation with a high speed of bow that your right hand and your right arm knows exactly where the next string is not approximately but exactly and that you learn by playing the string crossings and double stops because your hand and arm will memorize where exactly the next string is. So that would be the first thing that I would do. I practice it in double stops and do that at a slow speed so you can correct intonation when you need to and uh, keep doing that. It's actually the first thing I do when I practice this variation is I practice it in double stops. The next thing in this variation which is very important is the bow division. We have on the down bow, we have a half note, that will be four eighth notes. That's not a big deal with bow division, excepting that you want to pull your bow at an even speed. So you would have two eighth notes in the lower half and two eighth notes in the upper half. Now in the up bow, where you're lifting your bow twice, that becomes more of a deal. Because you can't distribute the eighth notes evenly because you have um, air travel time. <laughs> so what you're doing, you have two eighth notes slurred, then you lift your bow and you're traveling through the air and then you bring it back down and you lift it again. So the important thing is since you can't stop your bow when it's in the air and you also you can't go back if you've used too much because 
works beautifully at a slow speed, but you won't be able to do that up to speed because if you try that up to speed, you have, you have too much movement down here. You need to travel at an even speed, whether your bow is on the string or whether it's in the air. So what you need to do is you need to use a little bit less than half the bow for the first two eighth notes. The third eighth note is in the air. You keep traveling at the same speed. Bring it down again. And remember, you still need a bit of bow left because you're lifting it again and then and then you bring it back down again so you have so very 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 important is the bow division generally with bow technique it stands and falls with intelligent and exact bow di division so that will be the next thing to work at when you're working at this variation. Another important thing in this variation is to be rhythmically precise. To do that, it helps to put the metronome onto eighth notes instead of quarter notes, because that will make it easier for you to make sure that the half note has exactly four eighth notes, and also for the placing of your eighth notes in the up bow. So start slowly. This is 140, that's about half speed. very helpful. Start with a speed that you feel comfortable with, ideally one which is perhaps a little bit too easy, a little bit too slow, so that you can do it well and you feel on top of it. And then you can start slowly speeding up. Remember, if you speed up with the metronome, do it in small steps. Otherwise, if the steps are too big, then you will probably start losing precision. And generally, of course, it's very good to practice this variation slowly so that you can control your bow and so that you know what you're doing. But in this variation, particularly push yourself a little bit with speed. Try to get it a bit faster than you can start off doing with it. You don't have to go all the way up to the required speed of, I think, 144 to the quarter note. But if you can speed yourself up a little bit, you will be helping your bow technique a lot because it's important once you start getting it into the higher speeds to have a nice even flow of the bow. Now, the next thing that's important is when you get into the lower half, after the last eighth note, curl your fingers. And when you bring it back down in the down bow, to drop your arm. And then as from the middle, add weight. So, curl your fingers and now drop your arm. Add weight. That's important for the control in the lower half and also to land well on your down bow, particularly in the high speeds that becomes important. Okay, if you like this, subscribe, give me a like. Next video is going to be about detaché and spiccato.